here is your first question. Which of the following electrolyte abnormalities is most likely present in this patient with this electrocardiogram given? Is it hypercalcemia or is it hyperkalemia? Is it hypocalcemia or is it hypokalemia? Here is your first question. Which of the following electrolyte abnormalities is most likely present in this patient with this electrocardiogram given? Is it hypercalcemia or is it hyperkalemia? Is it hypocalcemia or is it hypokalemia? First, look at this EKG. There are two, three prominent findings that you can make out. First one is the obvious ST segment elevations, as you can see here. And the second one is your T wave changes, okay, which are looking at here. And apart from that, if you look at the QT interval, so you know what is QT interval? It's from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. And what you can make out is the fact that the QT interval is very, very short. In fact, the ST segment, even though it's elevated, is literally non-existent in this EKG. So there are two prominent findings. Number one is short QT where the ST segment is literally non-existent and the second one is the ST segment elevation itself. Two findings, important findings. So what are the electrolyte abnormalities which can result in short QT and ST segment elevation? Theoretically speaking, it can happen in hyperkalemia also, but in exams, you're going to make a diagnosis of hypercalcemia. Even though short QT and uh, ST segment elevation can be present in hyperkalemia, you will see other changes as well in hyperkalemia like tall T waves. You will be able to see white QRS. Plus or minus, you can see absent P waves. And uh, you can also see various AV blocks and bundle branch blocks. And of course, finally, it will end up with uh, something called a sine wave pattern, which will turn it in as a stole or a diastolic cardiac arrest. Apart from that, at any stage of hyperkalemia, you might have ventricular tachyarrhythmias, that is VT or VF. Especially ventricular tachycardia is very common at any stage of hyperkalemia. You cannot predict that. So you don't see tall T waves here. You don't see much of uh, white QRS here. You don't see those characteristic absent P waves. So that is the reason why I'm going to make a diagnosis of hypercalcemia uh, with regards to this EKG. And what are the features of hypercalcemia? The number one feature, as I've told you, is going to be the short QT interval. In the sense, the ST segment is the one that will be affected with regards to calcium changes in the EKG. So if you take a QRS complex and the T wave, like in this hypothetical example, you know what is the QT interval. So this is going to be the QT interval and this is going to be the ST segment, this area. Remember, calcium related changes is going to affect the phase two, plateau phase of the action potential curve. So the ST segment is the one that is determined by the phase two, the plateau phase of the action potential curve. And that is the reason why the ST segment will be the one that will be affected by calcium uh, related disturbances in the body as well. So what happens in hypocalcemia, your ST segment will be lengthened. And because of that, the QT interval will appear lengthened. But the T wave duration will not be altered that much in calcium related problems. And in hypercalcemia, the ST segment will be short. In severe hypercalcemia, the ST segment will be literally non-existent. And that is the reason why your QT also tends to appear very, very short. So what happens in hypercalcemia? You're going to have a QRS complex and you're going to have a T wave. And because the T wave appears very early without any ST segment at all, it tends to appear as if there is a J point elevation or uh, ST segment elevation. Plus, apart from that, there might be a slight flattening of the T wave also in some patients with hypercalcemia. Plus, at the same time, there will be upsloping of this T wave, as well, especially the initial part of the T wave may appear upsloping. So, that's what you're exactly seeing here. If you look at this, EKG, the initial part of the T wave appears a little upsloping as well. So this is very characteristic of hypercalcemia once again. Or you might see a completely flat T wave also, 
Remember in hyperkalemia, you see a tall T wave, not a flat T wave. But if you see a ST segment elevation, the short QT and a flat T wave. Think about hypercalcemia, not hyperkalemia. And what you will see in hypocalcemia, in hypocalcemia, there will be long ST segment. And because of that, there will be prolongation of the QT interval. And you might see some associated T wave changes as well, which are not that important. In hypokalemia, on the other hand, you are going to see pathological UVs, which you all know. But apart from that, you might see ST depressions, which can uh, look like that of uh, hockey stick ST depression that you see in uh, digitalis effect. But this ST segment depression will be a little different from that of digoxinemic. But anyways, we are not going to discuss about that right now. And apart from that, you might also uh, see a prolonged QU interval. Even though certain undergrad textbooks give prolonged QT interval, but it's actually not the prolonged QT interval. It's actually the prolonged QU interval. That is because the U waves, which are big in hypokalemia, tends to merge with the T waves. And that is the reason sometimes you will not be able to make out the difference between the T wave and the U wave. So, as such, you are going to measure the QU interval and not the QT interval in patients with hypokalemia. So, this EKG is very typical of hypercalcemia. Okay, so the right answer for this question is going to be option number A.